The engine behind many of our indicators within our swing toolkit is our zigzag tool. Now this is a custom tool that, that I built that, uh, that allows you to define what, what is a swing. When you look at this, this naked chart here, uh, you know, you may kind of visually look at and see, uh, see what, what these various kind of movements, up and down movements are. Now, each person may look at this and see something slightly different. Like one person may look at this up move here and this pull back here and this move higher here. Another person might say, well, there was also this move here and then this pull back here and this move higher and this move here, here, here. You, you know, another, everyone who might define what is a swing differently. So you have to standardize that. You have to make sure that when you're looking at and you're doing analysis that you define a swing the same way each time and that's what our that's what the tool does for you that's what the zigzag tool does for you so I want to add that to the, to the chart quickly uh, if I go down to our up down section here's our the swing toolkit zigzag here now this is automatically this is what's used by our automatic uh, Fibonacci uh, retracement, these symmetry tools, by, these are these are all using this zigzag indicator behind the scenes to define what these swings are. Now you can adjust this if I go back into the the properties, click on the zigzag, and you see it comes defaulted to you know, a bar break of five. Now what what that means is when it when they're uh, when bars are forming and it comes back you have to have a bar that breaks the low of the last five bars so for example this this one red bar here broke one two three four it looks like it broke four bars it did not break the fifth bar here this this did not break that low so that did not create a new swing that did not create a new swing this one did not create a new swing either and then finally, about about this red bar here, this one broke the past five bars. One, two, three, four, five. So this one would have made an official pullback at that point. Now it could have, you could still keep on pulling back at that point and it would still be all part of this one swing. But for it to become an official swing, it needs to break uh, the last five bars. So if we look at current price here, if if this were to officially become an upswing, it would, it would need to break one, two, three, four, five. So it would, it would ultimately need to break this high to, to become a, a new upswing. Now, if new bars keep forming down here, then, then that rule, those rules would change on a per bar basis. Um, now, if you, you see here, you could change the type. If, if each pullback, it has to pull back a certain percentage amount. Uh, you can you can set that. Now this will vary greatly depending on the time frame. So uh, you know if you're looking at a five minute chart, a you know a, 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 a full back a pullback value of of one percent for example. Well, if you're looking at an intraday chart on a uh, on a stock or something, then each little swing, it won't necessarily pull back one percent of the value of that of that indicator. So, I mean, of that instrument. So, um, you have to be very careful with this setting. This one is really more useful for, like, you know, daily, weekly, you know, higher time frames where an actual percentage pullback uh, would make more sense. Otherwise, it would need to be, you know, a decimal place here to be maybe pretty small uh, number of points. Uh, it has to pull back, you know, a certain certain number of points uh, in order for it to to be uh, determined um, classified as an official pullback. Uh, bar break we went over before. Ticks is very similar to points. It's just the, uh, a certain number of ticks it has to pull back um, before it's, it's classified as a new um, a new a new swing. I personally prefer bar break. Uh, I want it to show that it's, it actually is breaking uh, previous previous bars for it to be classified as a new a new um, swing. Now if you're looking to tailor this and you're wanting to 
uh, kind of play around with different values here, there's this really useful pullback editor here. If I, if I turn that on and I hit OK, you see that it adds this, um, this little, little, little tool here. Now, I'm going to, instead of uh, showing this off um, using the zigzag itself, I'm going to add an indicator, for example, our auto Fibonacci indicator here. I'm going to highlight, uh, hide um, its its parameters and go down to the zigzag uh, section of the auto Fibonacci, and I'm going to add its pullback editor to to the chart here. Uh, so you can see there is the auto Fibonacci indicator and the swings that those same swings that were defined using a, a bar break of five. Now I can look at this editor here and I can I can increase or decrease the values here. So if I hit de if I decrease these values and it's changing what's required for it to be a swing. So if it just just needs to break one bar, then for it to uh, be classified as a swing, then you're going to have a lot of little swings here. Uh, so for example, this, this, this pullback right here, this, this bar broke one swing. And so that was a valid pullback right there. If I change this to two, that's no longer valid. That's no longer a, a te technically a, a, sw a valid swing based on these parameters. It needs to break at least at least two. And in this move up, this high only broke one, one. it did not break two bars back. Um, and it, we didn't, didn't break a new low, so none of these lows matter because it didn't break this low. So we're looking at a high, a, a higher high that broke the last two. And this was the, the first bar that broke uh, at least the previous two bars and was higher than this bar. And then it made a new high, new high, new high, new high without having a valid pullback. And so until we came down to this bar here, which broke one, two bars, this, this bar here broke its, its previous two, and it started a new official downswing. So again, you can adjust this easily right here. You can make it even keep going higher and higher and um, and, and uh, make it much more um, you know, smoother as far as the amount of swings go. So again, our custom uh, zigzag indicator is the engine behind uh, our, our indicators here. And so I, I urge you to play around with this and, and, and see uh, if you want to adjust its default settings. I, I like the default settings. I think that it's, it's, it's great for most all situations, but I wanted to show off the ability and, and the features of this particular uh, indicator and especially this this little little editor here which allows you to to quickly in, instead of going back in here changing this um, going down to the zigzag here changing this value to a, you know a, a three and then hitting OK and then coming back in here and say oh that's not right and then going back in here and adjusting it it, it is a quick way to adjust its value uh, okay, well, if you have any questions, please email me at daniel at updown.com. That's U-P-P-D-N-N.com. And best success in your trading.